All right, can you get your witness back on this? There you are. Sure. Good morning, Ms. Popple. Good morning. All right, you're still under oath. Yes. Um, yesterday we uh, were discussing a Mary Kay bag that was located, I think, in the prop truck. Do you remember that? Yes. <coughs> okay. So. Oh. Sorry. Um. Yesterday we were discussing a Mary Kay bag that was located in the prop truck. Do you recall that? Yes. So let's go ahead and continue there. Um, I am showing you what, what we've marked as States Exhibit 44A. Do you recognize this? Yes. And what is this a photo of? This is a close-up of what's inside that Mary Kay bag. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. Um, what are these over here on the right? Uh, those are spent blank rounds. Okay. And what are we looking at here? This, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. What is the exhibit number of this particular? This one is uh, 44B. 44B. I apologize. Thank you. No problem. Yeah. Thank you. Um, this is an overall view of what's inside that Mary Kay bag. Okay. And so were there things underneath these boxes? Yes. A and what was underneath the boxes? Um, I believe there were additional rounds underneath those boxes. Okay. And uh, do you know what we're looking at here on the side? This is the outside pocket of that Mary Kay bag. Okay. And I'm sorry, this is State's Exhibit 45. Maybe I need another cup of coffee. Um, I'm showing you States Exhibit 46. Do you recognize this? Yes. And what's that? This is the inside of that bag once those uh, ammunition boxes were removed, uh, where you can see loose rounds. All right, thank you. And States Exhibit <coughs> excuse me, 47, <coughs> what are we looking at here? This is the middle portion of that bag. Okay. And do you recognize States Exhibit 48? Yes. And what is this? This is a box of ammunition marked as Dummy Rounds 45 LC that was removed from that Mary Kay bag. And States Exhibit 48A, do you recognize this? Yes. And what are these? This is the foam insert containing Dummy Rounds that was removed from that box. And how many rounds uh, altogether, if you recall, were in there? 17. Okay, thank you. States Exhibit 49, do you recognize that? These are those same rounds removed from the foam insert and laid out. Okay, and what's the, the round that you have there by itself up, uh, up at the top? Uh, that round that's moved sideways uh, posted a concern at first because it was not making any noise with ball bearings inside like the rest of the rounds were. Is this the same Dentix round that we admitted into evidence yesterday? It is not. It is not, okay. 
th this is just uh, a round that was in that box that didn't shake? Correct. Okay. And, and did you do anything with that round? We sent that round to the FBI because it was of concern, and their determination was that the ball bearings were stuck inside of it. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> that was the reason it wouldn't rattle? Correct. Okay. Um, States Exhibit 50, what are we looking at here? This is an ammunition box of, uh, marked as 3840 dummies that was removed from the prop truck. And are all of the rounds in that styrofoam insert 3840 dummies? No. Uh, what other calibers in there? Some of them are uh, 4440s. All right. Uh, any 45 uh, Colt rounds in there? No, I don't believe so. Okay. Uh, States Exhibit 51, uh, what are we looking at here? This is a close-up of those same rounds. Okay, and we can kind of see the head stamp there. Can you see that? Yes. Uh, States Exhibit 52, what's this? These are those same rounds uh, laid out. And the rounds over on the right-hand side, um, what are those? The rounds that are uh, over on that side that are laid sideways, uh, those are the uh, 3840 rounds. These are the 3840s? Uh, I apologize. Let me refer to my report. Sure. No, I'm sorry, those are the uh, 4440s. And the, the chrome and shiny brass uh, that we're looking at here on the left, what, what caliber are those? Those are the 3840s. Okay, great. In terms of the um, 4440s here on the right, do all of the 4440s that you have, dummy rounds that you have in evidence, do they all have that same um, uh, projectile that we can see here? Yes. And is that projectile um, dissimilar than the projectile of the live rounds? Yes. States Exhibit 53, um, what's this? These are the rounds that were provided to Detective Hancock um, from Hannah Gutierrez during her interview. Okay. And can, can you, were they all dummy rounds? Yes. And uh, the five on the left, do they shake? No. Uh, the one on the right, does it rattle? Yes. Rattle rather than shake, I apologize. States Exhibit 54, what are we looking at here? This is the close-up of the projectile that was recovered from Joel Souza's shoulder. Okay. And just to be clear, this is the only projectile that was, um, that, that was taken into evidence um, from, presumably from the injuries of the victims. Correct. Okay. States Exhibit 55. What's this? This was a bag of spent casings that was located inside the Mary Kay bag. And States Exhibit 56. These are those same casings laid out. And I see that you have some separated up here on the top left. Do you see those? Yes. I'm going to move to States Exhibit... 57, what's this? This is a close-up of those uh, same rounds. The casings? Casings, yes. <clears throat> um, all four of these spent casings, are they all 45 long Colt? Or yeah. 45 Colt? Yes. And are they all Starline brass casings? Yes. <clears throat> um, it would appear that they all have silver primers? Yes. Um, are these casings 
basically identical to the casing that was taken from, from the scene and sent to the FBI? Your Honor, I'm going to object on the leading, and if it can be rephrased so it's not leading. Sure. Um, did you find any spent casings on the prop cart? Yes. How many? One. And can you tell us what that one looks like as compared to what we're looking at here in States 57? Yes. The casing that was located on the cart is a silver primer and States 45 Colt with a, the Starline Brass logo. All right. Thank you. States Exhibit 58. Do you know what we're looking at here? Yes. And what is this? This was a shirt collected from the scene that was marked as item 18. Uh, do you know which of the victims this belonged to? I believe this was Joel Souza's uh, shirt. Okay. States Exhibit 59, do you recognize that? This was that same shirt, uh, just from the opposite of you. And let me, let me stop you there. I'm going to go back to States Exhibit uh, 58, um, and I'm going to blow it up here. Do you, uh, do you see here where it says marker 18? Yes. What does that mean to you? Uh, what that correlates with is what I marked it with our crime scene evidence markers on scene. So it was marked on scene with a yellow marker that stated as 18. Okay. States Exhibit 59. Um, what writing do you have here? I have it as uh, from Med 60. Okay, so I'm going to ask you again. Um, I think you indicated that this was the same shirt that was in 59, is it? Or I'm sorry, 58. Uh, it is not. I apologize. Okay. Um, so let's move to States Exhibit 60. Do you recognize that? Yes. And uh, what are we looking at here? This is the, the shirt collected from Med 60, which was the ambulance uh, from a viewpoint of it laid completely out. And uh, who, who was wearing this shirt on the day of the incident? I believe this shirt belonged to Helena Hutchins. All right, thank you. And these have already been admitted into evidence, uh, but States Exhibit 61, uh, do you recognize that? Yes. And did you take this photo? Yes. And can you tell us where you took the photo and why? This is the inside of Lieutenant Benavidez's vehicle where the two boxes of ammunition that were handed to him were secured. States Exhibit 62, what's that? This is a close-up on those ammunition boxes. And in States Exhibit 62, can you uh, clearly see that label? Yes. Can you tell us what the label says? 45 Long Colt Dummies, JS. And when you say JS, you're referring to those small letters in the center? Yes. All right. And States Exhibit 63, what's this? This is that same box. Um, only where was this photo taken? This was uh, in my office in my processing room. Okay. States Exhibit 64? This is the inside of that box. And this round here, um, we may have already discussed it. Was this round sent to the FBI? Yes. <clears throat> Was it determined to be a live round? Yes. States Exhibit 65, what's this? These are those same rounds removed from the foam insert and laid out. Okay. And if you know and if you need me to bounce back to the previous photo, I'm happy to. From looking at this, do you know which of these is that live round? The live round in this case would be next to all of the rounds that have the hole drilled through the side. 
Here? Yes. Well, let's talk about that. I want to make sure when, it, let me ask you this, when you took the rounds out of the styrofoam insert and you lined them up, did you line them up in the same order that they were in the styrofoam insert? No. Okay. Why did you put these five at the bottom by themselves? Because they were a different type of round. Okay, and so how are these five over here on the left different than the rest of the rounds from the box? So they have the hole drilled through the side. Um, all five of them? Uh, those four and then the one on the end would be the live round. Okay, this one right here? Yes. Alrighty, thank you. Um, States Exhibit 70, well let me, let me, let me stop for a second. Uh, I think you testified yesterday that you participated in a search warrant uh, at PDQ Props, is that correct? Yes. And did you collect any live ammunition from PDQ Props? Yes. Okay. Um, and let's turn to State's Exhibit 70. Do you recognize this? Yes. And what is this? This was a box of ammunition that was recovered from PDQ Props. A box of ammunition? Yes. Was it live or dummy or blank? Only live ammunition was collected from PDQ props. Okay. Um, when you were there, <clears throat> were, were, were there other types of ammunition there also? Yes. Okay. Um, States Exhibit 71, what are we looking at here? This is the live ammunition that was recovered from PDQ props. And this live ammunition that was recovered from PDQ props, uh, is it visibly different than the live rounds that were found on the movie set? Yes. And how is it visibly different? So there were different types of live ammunition collected from PDQ, um, including different stamps on that am ammunition. And let me ask you this, the, the projectile shape, uh, is the projectile shape um, different in these that, than in the rounds that were found on, on set? Yes. States Exhibit 72, what are we looking at here? So this is a close-up of some of that live ammunition. And. Um, can you tell us what color primers the live ammunition from PDQ Props has? Uh, this ammunition that we're looking at now had brass. Okay. And that's, <clears throat> is that different than the live rounds that were found on set? Yes. Did you bring a, another um, piece of physical evidence with you at my request? Yes, I did. If you can help me.
going to uh, mark this item as State's Exhibit 91. Ms. Popple, do you recall uh, yesterday when we discussed State's Exhibit 79? Yes. And remind us what State's Exhibit 79 is. This was a live round that was deconstructed by the FBI. And where did this live round come from? Um, if I can see the label on it, I apologize. Um, so this live round originated from the box that was handed to Lieutenant Benavides. Okay, and that's, uh, that's the, the box that just has the one live round in it that we looked at the photo of? Yes, with the silver primer. Oh, I'm not connected anymore. Okay, and that would have been State's Exhibit 64, for the record, is what we're referring to. Yes. And uh, what you brought me today, State's Exhibit 91. Let me try to get it out of the... Uh, can you tell us what we're looking at here? This was... Oh, let me... <laughs> Back it up for just a second so we can see more. Okay. This was a round collected from PDQ that was then sent to the FBI and the FBI deconstructed it. Okay. Well, what, what was the purpose behind sending the live rounds from the set and the live rounds from PDQ to the FBI? They did an analysis of the gunpowder components in both rounds. Okay, great. So what we just saw in State's Exhibit 79, uh, this is similar, do you agree? It has a casing and a projectile and a container of gunpowder. Yes. Um, can you see the, uh, the gunpowder that, that I've zoomed in on there? Yes. And does that look to be the same just visibly from, from just looking at it? No, does that? I'm not object to that. I'm, I'm not quite sure what the way, the way you're, um, she's phrasing it. Yes, it just, I guess, it's okay. It, sometimes it sounds lady to me, but it's okay. We just go for it. Okay. All right, thank you. Um, is this different? Than, than the other exhibit, the gunpowder. Yes. Okay, it looks different, right? Yes. Thank you. And give me just one moment to review my notes. And just for completeness, you, do, do you also have a, a, a large amount of blank rounds in evidence? Yes. Um, how many blank rounds do you think you have in evidence? I would say probably close to a thousand. And approximately how many gun belts do you have in evidence? I believe three. And approximately how many guns do you have in evidence? Uh, around 15 or 16. And those are real functioning firearms? Yes. Bear with me. I'll pass the witness. Thank you. Cross exam? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Thank you.
morning, ma'am. Good morning. Now, I want to talk to you first about your training and your job and, and what you've been trained on as a crime scene technician. Uh, can you tell the jury a little bit about your training? Um, yes, I have my bachelor's degree in forensics. Uh, I've had over a thousand additional hours of in-classroom training um, over various different uh, forensic areas such as uh, blood pattern analysis, uh, latent print analysis, um, crime scene reconstruction, those kinds of areas. Okay, and has that included firearm and ammunition training and, and determining the difference between types of ammunition? Uh, not that specific, no. Okay, so have, what, what is the scope of your training you've had on determining different types of ammunition? I mean, are you specifically referring to? Calibers, uh, 4440, 38, 45, you've been trained on recognizing the differences? That I have, yes. <laughs> okay, and how about recognizing the differences between dummy rounds, blanks, and live rounds? I have not been to that type of training, no. Okay, so your testimony earlier when you were talking about the dummy rounds and the various measurements and that, you have not been trained in that area? No. Okay, now part of your training in terms of verifying that a round is either a dummy or a live round is you need to send that to the FBI lab for confirmation. Would you agree with that? Yes. Because uh, some of the dummy rounds appear like live rounds. They look like live rounds, correct? Yes. In fact, the round that came out of the box we saw earlier that did not shake, you sent that off to the FBI lab because you wanted to confirm what that was, correct? Yes. And part of the thing the FBI does is they take apart the round and they determine if it has powder in it. Is that right? Yes. And when they do that, that can that tells them basically if it's a live round or a dummy. Do you agree with that? Yes. So would you also agree in your training that you've never been taught that you can eyeball a dummy and determine if it's a dummy or a live, or eyeball a round and determine if it's a dummy or live? Uh, no, I've not been trained in that area. Okay. And, and you would also agree with me that you can't look at a picture of a round and determine necessarily if it's a dummy or, or a live? I would disagree with that. And, and why would you disagree? Uh, the rounds that have holes drilled into the side of them or the primers removed appear to visibly be dummy rounds. And those do. Now how about the rounds that don't shake? don't have a hole in them and you're looking at that, you can't tell just by looking at it that's live or dummy, correct? Correct. And that's why you sent that one off to the lab again, right? Yes. Okay. Now, I want to show you what's been marked as uh, defense I. Now, I'll show counsel. Okay, ma'am, I'm gonna, I am gonna approach and see if you recognize this photo that we've just been talking about. I'm not gonna introduce it, but I'm asking you. Sure. Uh, and this is defense I. If you could take a look at that. You, uh, ma'am, do you recognize that photo? I do not. Okay, and, and so you didn't take that photo? No. Okay. What is in that? I know we're not gonna move to introduce it, but what is in this picture? Uh, it appeared. Hang on, I'm going to object. She's never seen the picture before. Uh, she didn't take the picture. I don't think she can answer that question without it being completely speculative. And I'm just asking her to identify it. Uh, what What is it? Not to go into detail, but what is it? Just for the record, it's a picture. Like, I'm just geez, asking her. I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Bowles. Since since you're cross, can't you just lead her? in that question and I, then, I can. And we don't get sure. out in the I just case. wanted her to say it. Yeah, that's fine. This is a picture with rounds in it in a box? Yes. Okay. And if I could have that back. Thank you. Okay, ma'am, so in terms of recognizing uh, live versus dummy rounds, you would also agree with me that you have not been trained on the shininess of rounds and how that 
you can't tell a, a dummy or a lie from their shininess, right? Correct. Okay. And um, yesterday there was some talk about patine uh, or a patina on some of the rounds. Do you remember that? Yes. And, and actually what that is is just oxidation on the round case, correct? Yes. So in other words, when a round sits around for a long enough, oxygen interacts with the metal and it's just going to turn a little color, correct? Yes. And because oxygen does that to the outside of a round, you don't know whether that may, it, it doesn't matter whether it, the, there's a patina as to whether it's live or a dummy, correct? Correct. Because they have the same cases. Yes. Okay. Um, now, with regard to the FBI, there were several things that were sent to the FBI you testified yesterday for testing, correct? Yes. And there was DNA testing uh, requested on the revolver that was used by Mr. Baldwin, correct? Yes. And you knew that that was submitted? Yes. Now, yesterday you talked about somebody told you at the FBI that the live rounds could not be tested for DNA. You remember that? Yes. Who did you talk to specifically? I don't recall who I specifically spoke to at the lab. Okay. Did you make that call? To not send them? No. Did you make the call to the FBI personally? Yes, I did, okay. along with uh, their representative for our area, who was uh, Agent Cortez. Cortez. Uh, okay. Now, were you aware that that we had requested those rounds, fingerprints, and DNA be taken from them? That you requested it? Yes. No. Okay. You were never told that? No. Okay. And you were, you're were you also aware that those live rounds were never tested for their fingerprints? I was not aware of that. I, it was my understanding that they were tested for fingerprints. Well, then you're not aware that I asked Detective Hancock to do that and it wasn't done? You're not aware of that? Objection to the form of question. He's asking for to speculate. How, well, how would she know what he says to Detective Hancock? He's, he's not asking her to speculate, but um, she's answering your question about whether you are or where. I don't know if this, this, I think you can follow up about why, you know, what, what's the purpose of asking this witness about those things? Yes. And, and yesterday you testified that these, these live rounds have been sent for fingerprints. That was my understanding. But that, you, you didn't talk to Detective Hancock to see that she didn't do that? Uh, it's my understanding that it got done. Where's the report on that? The FBI report on that? Yes. I would assume that the FBI would have it. Okay. And are you familiar with that report in Mr. Ziegler's report? I am not. Okay. So you haven't read that recently? Not recently, no. Okay. okay. So you don't, you don't have first-hand knowledge that, that those live rounds were tested for fingerprints, correct? Correct. So you were, you're just going on an assumption. That's it was what you understood. The information that I had from the lab. All right, just wait. All right. I'm sorry. Your Honor. I'm sorry to interrupt. He's putting. He's uh, sorry, sending things. Okay. Oh. No. Okay. Sorry to interrupt. Oh no, you. no, no. Uh, sorry, Your Honor. Okay. So again, that was just what you you thought, but it, it wasn't. Anyway, we'll get into that with Detective Hancock. Okay. With regard to um, your role as a crime scene technician, you also took a series of photos of different scenes, correct? Yes. And that included the uh, church? Yes. And th that included the prop truck? Yes. And that included Seth Kinney's business PDQ, correct? Yes. Okay. With regard to the prop truck, do you re recall when that search warrant occurred? Uh, for the prop truck yes. took place on October 27th. Okay. And when did the search of Seth Kinney's PDQ business take place? November 30th. And then the incident on set, the shooting on set, that occurred October 21st, correct? Yes. Okay. So October 21st, the prop truck is searched six days later, is that correct? Yes. And then Seth Kinney's place is not searched for over a month, correct? Yes. So during that month period, 
you have no idea whether Mr. Kenny um, disposed of rounds or got rid of rounds. You have no idea whether that that, that happened. No. Okay. And were you aware that Mr. Kenny had received rounds from the set of Yellowstone 1883? Yes. Because one of those things in his sighted shop said live, live 1883, correct? Yes. Now, that, as I understand, that was empty at the time of the search warrant, correct? No. That, that canister was not empty? The box marked live ammo 1883 is the only area we found live rounds. Okay. Did he not have any other live rounds in that shop? I don't believe so, no. Because there were, and we'll show pictures in a little bit, but there were tons of ammunition boxes, correct? Yes. Okay. So did you search all of those boxes? Did you look into all those boxes? I believe so, yes. Every one of them? I... I can't be certain. Okay. Because there's a lot of them. You remember yes. that? Yeah. Um, did you, in fact, just take Seth Kenny's word on what was live and what was not? No. I know that boxes were dug through and it was a time consuming process. Okay. Now, you didn't seize all of the rounds from that um, 1883 can, did you? I collected the live rounds that were in the box mark 1883 that were 45 Colt. Were, did you get all, all the 45 rounds from that canister? Yes, all of the 45 rounds. Okay. And did you ask him whether he had gotten rid of some of the rounds or used some of the rounds prior to you all getting there for the search? I did not interview Seth Kenny. Okay, so you don't know the answer to that? No. Okay. Now, earlier, you showed a, a picture of the Mary Kay bag. Do you remember that? Yes. And there was a box inside it with blue writing that we saw. Do you recall that? Yes. And it said something like Dummy Rounds L 45 LC? Yes. And you know that that's Seth Kenny's box, correct? I Yes, I know. Okay, and that box was found in the prop truck? Yes. Okay. Uh, now, you're not aware whether Sarah Zachary may have taken anything from the prop cart to the prop truck, or are you? I do not know. Okay. So if she had removed anything from the prop cart and taken it to the prop truck, you would not know that. Is that what you're telling the jury? Correct. So Seth Kenny's box, you have no idea whether that was on the prop cart, but it was moved to the prop truck, do you? No. Now, are you aware that you, you uh, responded to the scene at, at the time of the shooting, right? Right after the shooting? Yes. How long did it take you to get there after? Uh, it took me several minutes. Uh, we had a meeting in our criminal investigations division first before we all headed out to the scene. How long did it take you after those several minutes to get to the scene? Uh, I do not recall. Okay. Was it 30 minutes? Was it an hour? How it long was the drive? Was I would say 30 minutes at most. Okay. So when you got there, were you aware that other sheriffs had gotten there? Yes. At what time, how, how long after, if you know, did those sheriffs report after the shooting? How long did it take for them to get there? I do not know. Okay. At the time you got there, did you see whether Mr. Baldwin was segregated in a vehicle? I don't recall. Okay. Did you see that Miss Gutierrez was, though? Uh, yes, I recall her being okay. in the vehicle. Do you recall seeing Alec Baldwin talking on his cell phone and just walking around? Uh, no, I don't recall that. Okay. You haven't seen any pictures like that or video or anything like that? Uh, in the following days in media, yes. Okay. I've seen him on the phone in photos. So, so you're aware now, you can tell the jury he was not segregated? Uh, I do not know. Okay. Now, with regard to your work on set that day, you took pictures when you responded to the shooting. Did you do any interviews, anything like that? No, I do not interview. 
Okay, and your your job at that time as a crime scene technician is to secure the scene, secure the evidence. Would that be fair? Yes. Part of your goal in securing the evidence is to make sure that you get it right, you get the chain of custody right, and you make sure that's logged. Is that right? Yes. Why is the chain of custody so important? The chain of custody is essentially the tracking of where the item originated from to who has possession of it now and everything in between. Okay, and if there is a break in the chain of custody, that's a problem for you in terms of verifying that evidence, correct? Yes. Now, if before you got there, Miss Zachary had thrown rounds away and, or, and she had taken items from the prop cart to the prop truck, that could cause problems with the chain of custody, correct? Well, I, if someone were to remove evidence from a scene, it wouldn't just cause problems for chain of custody, it would cause problems because we no longer have that evidence. Correct. In fact, if you don't have evidence, it's lost. That's a serious problem in a case like this, correct? Yes. And this is a uh, death investigation. So you would ideally want all of the evidence that might be relevant for a jury to see later, correct? Yes. Now, are you aware here that, that Ms. Zachary actually threw those rounds away? At beyond my scope of knowledge. Okay. And again, we're, we're talking about those getting thrown away. But now let's talk about if items were taken from that prop cart to the prop truck before you got there, would you agree that breaks the chain of custody? It disturbs the scene. Would you agree with that? Yes. So in other words, when you get there and you take pictures of the prop cart, you wouldn't know if that's how it looked at the time of the shooting, would you? No. And um, we saw a picture of those boxes that went into Deputy Benavidez's truck. Do you recall that? Yes. Now, um, later on, I know you put them back in the cart to take pictures, correct? Yes. So... And I know you weren't intending to do something, but when you placed them back, you have no idea if that was where they were before. That was not the reasoning behind placing them into the scene. I understand, and I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to say your reasoning a certain way. I'm just saying that you did not know when you placed them back for a picture that that's exactly where they were before. Correct. So when the jury looks at a picture of the prop cart now, they don't know if that's where those were at the time of the shooting. And that's not your fault. I'm just saying that that's a fact, correct? Correct. And um, in terms of evidence, when you're trying to, as a crime scene technician, you don't want people, for example, to reach across the crime scene tape and either grab evidence or put evidence on a cart, correct? Correct. Now, similarly, you would not want, as a crime scene technician, for an officer to handle a weapon with his bare hand. That wouldn't be ideal, would it? No. And in fact, you're trying to get DNA later and fingerprints, but did you see the uh, camera of the deputy Benavides that handled that round, uh, weapon with his bare hand? Yes. Okay, and, and again, that's not ideal, is it? No. Okay. Um, in terms of, in terms of that, um, those rounds, you talked about the box, and you talked about different boxes they were found in that day, correct? Yes. Now, you have no idea whether Miss Zachary or Miss Gutierrez-Reed used those rounds on a day and then put them back in a different box, do you? No. So if you, for example, if these rounds were used the day before and they were changed out into a different box, you would have no way of knowing that, would you? No. So in other words, when we just went through a direct examination that these rounds came from this box and these rounds came from that box, you really have no idea where those rounds originated from, which box, do you? My statements for, for where they originated at that time. Yes, so that was just that day. But my question is, you do not know if three days before, these rounds were in that box and these rounds were in that box. Is that fair? Yes. Now, and I'm not, um, well, when you say that the boxes were handed to, to Benavides, 
isn't it true that actually um, he just grabbed those boxes? I do not know. Okay. So when you said they were handed to him, you really didn't know that? No. That was the information that I was given. Okay. But again, the, the lapel cam, um, everybody can watch it and see it, but, but for example, it doesn't look like anybody handed it to him. But you haven't seen it? I'll just object to the formal question. She's indicated that, that I don't think she knows. So. No, you're right. No, she's right. I'm sorry. Yeah. So I'll, I'll move forward on that. Um, now, I do want to show you some pictures that we're going to label. Uh, and I think by stipulation that we would uh, ask these to be introduced. And if it's possible, if Mr. Bullion could... M as in Mary? Uh, M as in Nancy, Judge. All right, so uh, we're moving for the admission. Do you have any objection? I don't have any objection uh, as long as uh, they are certain that these are photos that Ms. Popple took. Uh, what, do 